The center point receipt screen records activity that increases a cash account or decreases a line of credit account. In this session, we're going to go through the fields on a receipt screen and enter a cash receipt. From your processes menu at the top, click on revenues and then receipts. In your transaction entry screens, a lot of the entries are selecting an item from your setup list, beginning with our fund. So we can either hit an F4 key that would bring up a lookup list of our different funds, or we can click the magnifying glass at the end of the field, or you can just type in a couple of characters. So we know we want the general fund. If I type in GEN, it found a match and filled in my general fund. You can see that it filled in my bank account also. The other thing you can do that's handy in the fund and the bank account is a right click option in your different lookup lists. Always right click and check what menu items are there uh, to help you. And there is one called set as default. So if I typically use the same fund and receipts, of, uh, in this case, general fund, I could set this as a default. And what that means is the next time that I bring up the uh, receipt screen, it's automatically going to fill in Centerpoint Village General. If that isn't the case, that I flip around with the different funds, um, but I use the same checking account for a fund, then you might want to do that option as set as default on the bank account. And then every time I pick a fund, it will automatically go to that bank account. For example, if I switch to street fund right now, it automatically flipped to my street fund checking. And if I go back to general, it's going to flip back to my general fund checking. So it's just kind of guarding there you also to make sure you're using the right checking account with the right fund. The tab key moves from field to field, and we are over at the current batch. If this uh, um, no batch is what the default is, and if it's no batch, then when I save this transaction, it's going to post and do any printing that we might have selected on printing a receipt. If you don't want it to post right now because maybe there's some information you need to add later or somebody has to approve it, then you might batch. You can right click in this field, choose new, create a batch, and then you're going to just use that same batch and all the receipts uh, and all the transactions that are supposed to post at the same time with this one batch. We're going to leave it at no batch for now and tab over. And we are at bank deposit. This is an optional field used if you're doing a uh, deposit slip. You're taking multiple uh, checks or cash to the bank at one time, and you need a deposit slip. Um, the bank deposit would do that. Or it's also helpful for doing bank reconciliation. If you have a deposit number assigned to all the receipts that got deposited at one time, then that total number is going to be showing you in the bank reconciliation and be matching to the number that you would see on your bank statement. So it alleviates having to add things up manually in order to reconcile to the bank. But what you can do is leave the bank deposit field empty when you're doing the receipt screen. And when you're ready to go to the bank, simply go to processes, banking and bank deposit and at that point, do your bank deposit for all the receipts that you've accumulated at that time when you're ready to do that. Or you can enter it at this point. If you want to do a right click, you can do new, create your bank deposit, and put in the same deposit on all the receipts that should be deposited at one time. We're next going to go to our receive from, which is selecting our customer for this revenue. So in uh, this case, um, uh, there are some other right-click menu options, and I'm going to show you if I type in CEN, it's going to do a lookup of all of the um, names that begin with CEN. I have several here, but there is a right-click option in this field of contains that um, will toggle between contains and begins with. So right now it's doing begins with. If I switch and I do uh, contains and now type in CEN, it includes in my lookup not only ones that begin with the CEN, but now I have one that has CEN within the name of it. So it's a matter of how you want that lookup to behave. If you want to only be seeing things that begin with those characters that you're doing, or if it's anywhere in within the name of it. And we're going to go ahead and um, 
uh, select, actually, I'm going to select the um, county treasurer. And there is another right click menu option here of review transaction. So if we want to um, see what we've done in the past to make sure we don't duplicate something or just see what how we entered the transactions to this particular name in the past, we can go to review transactions. And this gives us a search screen of all the transactions in the date span that is uh, selected up at the top of what I've done. I could edit something here or look at it, um, whatever I want to do, but that was a little bit of help on that particular name. Or it also manages how I want the entry grid to be filled in for this particular name. So I can choose to leave the transaction empty, meaning the grid's going to be empty. I'm going to fill it in manually. I can select to have it recall the last transaction done to that particular name, or if I have um, assigned a reoccurring to this name, then I can choose that option to load the reoccurring transaction. So if I were to do a recall, um, it would be doing the same thing as clicking the button down at the bottom of recalling the last transaction. Um, if you do the recall at the bottom, every time you do recall, it will go back one more transaction until you get to the one that matches what you want for this particular entry. And still at this time, I can make any changes, change the amount or um, change the notation, whatever I needed to do. And another right click option is to um, show all items or show only active. So currently it's showing only active. If I want to show all items because I want to get to an inactive name, that will toggle from there, or I can also do that selection from my lookup, and there's a checkbox here. Unchecked means it's showing all names, and checked means it's showing only active. And then I have my other, I, we did the begins with our contains, and now our options. Options is setting what fields I wanted, what columns I wanted to be looking in when I do my lookup. So I could choose to just do abbreviation or just do last name, first name, or I could do both of them and say I want um, it to look in last name first. However, I want this lookup to be behaving when I try to find and filter out the name that I'm looking for. And on the right hand side, we select which column we want represented back in our field. So I have it set at last name, first name, but um, you know, you could do abbreviation or just last name, whatever uh, works out for you. If you were an account, you might want to select to do the account number, um, whatever you want selected there. And if you do any changes, you're going to have to start that again. So we're going to pick our county treasurer again. Okay, and we selected before to have it recall the last transaction because I clicked on that. So that's what filled in here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and tab. And the next place is our business address. We can change the business address if we need to. If this is, we have multiple addresses and we want it uh, printed to a different address, we can make that change there. Over on the right is our receipt invoice number, which is uh, incrementing based on our sequence. And our sequence is a uh, setup option under general and the numbering sequences. And it's just incrementing to the next number. The date you can, it will default to today's date or the last day of the last period opened in center point. If you want to just change the day of what it is, but it's the same month, you can just type in those numbers and it would do that. Or if it's a different month, then type in the number for that month and the day, and it'll still keep the same year. You can also use the calendar button to change what date that you want. On the amount, we can either leave it empty or we can, um, uh, put in the amount that it actually was. If we put in an amount, then it will uh, default to the next field in our uh, transaction. Let's actually do a clear here and select a different name so we don't have something filled in. Okay, so now if we do a 500 here, you can see that it filled in my amount on my first line of my grid and then it will keep um, as you change that amount, if it were for multiple things, it'll keep trying to uh, tie it out so that our total is the amount that we started with at the top. In the payment type, we have our selections of what kind of payment it was, if it was cash, check, credit card, 
um, and that is going to be used if you're doing um, deposit slips because you can filter the different types when you're doing that deposit. If you want to track the check number of the customer, you can enter that. And if this particular name had open invoices that were um, waiting to be received, the apply to open invoices would be highlighted in yellow and the balance would be there. And then you can click that button and it would list the open invoices and you could select to uh, receive whatever the amount was from those open invoices. And then that would fill out the grid for you here. In this case, we don't have any open invoices. We're gonna select an account and uh, we need to pick then the account that represents this revenue that we're taking in. So if we're doing Center Point County Highway Department, it might be a tax receipt. And then you can pick the department and the fields that you see in your grid are customizable. So you can right click on the blue row, select add remove columns, and you get a list of all the different columns that are available. And if you wanna add another column to the front screen so that you don't need to go to the detail, you can certainly do that. Um, so if we were wanting to maybe use project and we want that on the front field, then we could add that field. And then we're gonna put in our department. Um, if you wanna do a department, and so in this case, it's gonna be admin. And then we could put a notation if we wanted to um, and we are, we'd be ready to save this transaction. If it had um, represented more than one different revenue, then you can keep going in the grid and um, entering those different pieces of information. Down in the bottom are our print options. If we're printing a receipt, uh, we can click this button. If we want to print and change it to printing and pick our printer and then click OK. Um, the red X means it's not printing, and if it has a green check mark, that means it is printing. On the next button, if we were emailing, if there were emails set up for this particular customer, then we could email the receipt instead of printing it. And then there's some scanning and attaching documents. Um, if you want to scan a document to attach to this transaction, you would click the scan icon. And the paper clip is to attach to a, a document that already exists on the computer and you would use the attach button to browse to that document and then attach that. Down at the bottom, the memo lines will print on the receipt if you have some information or account number that you would want printed on there. And then adjust amount if the amounts that you have in the grid are different than what we started with and the grid is correct, then you can click Adjust Amount. That'll adjust the amount up at the top of the screen. Down at the bottom, Save will save this transaction, and if there's no batch, then it will post and do any printing at that same time. Clear clears everything out of there. Um, we already did a recall, and let's try a reoccurring. If I do County District, I have a reoccurring transaction set up where this is the same thing that I do all the time with uh, the County District. They uh, send us revenue for police citations. And so if I put an amount over here, then it fills in my amount uh, and I am ready to save this transaction. That's all that I need to do here. And the reoccurring is set up as a percent or as a fixed amount. So if this were a revenue where it was the same amount every single time, then you could set this up at fixed amount and enter that value. But this was set up as a reoccurring. Um, when I initially uh, selected that name and filled in the grid, you can click reoccurring, give it a description, and then save it. And that saves that as a reoccurring. So the next time you select that name, it fills out the grid with that information. And then under options are some other options. We can review transactions and review the last 10 transactions that were done with this particular fund and bank account combination. Custom fields is if you're using custom fields and um, you want to put in any comments for those custom fields. And recall, when you do the recall, you can either do a recall for a fund overall or for the combination of a fund bank account. So if you have multiple banks for a particular fund, then it would 
um, filter out just the ones for that combination. And then set tab stops is a shortcut if you're not using some of these different fields and you want to bypass them in your tabbing through the fields, you can uncheck those um, fields and it will not stop at those particular fields. And refresh, we'll just refresh the screen um, if you make some changes. So those are the different options for uh, entering a receipt screen and we are ready to save this transaction.